All right, let's get started. Um, thank you all for joining. Uh, we do these every month to give you guys an update on what we're working on here at Ironfish. Um, so first, I'll start off with uh, talking about some of our new hires. So we actually have three new hires joining the team, um, one of whom is uh, Craig, and I'll let him do his intro in just a minute. Um, then we have Mira joining, who is an intern, and she's going to be um, working with uh, Jason and Derek in particular. Um, and then we also have Yajun, who joined as well as a senior engineer. Um, she is currently uh, not here, so we'll do her for formal introduction um, next time we do this update. Um, but Craig just joined us as our general counsel. Um, could not have been better timing. His background is amazing. And um, I want to give him a moment to uh, introduce himself to all of you guys. Craig? Great. Thanks, Elena. Uh, great to be here. Uh, great to meet everybody here virtually. Uh, so my name is Craig Tim. I've, I've uh, joined Ironfish about a month ago. Um, I spent several years at the Department of Justice. Um, so I worked as, as, a, as a federal prosecutor and then at headquarters. Um, leading um, a money laundering section out of headquarters and then spent the last several years at, at Bank of America um, doing anti-money laundering work and sanctions work. And I think, um, you know, one of the things that, that, that brought me here and brought me to this space, you know, as I think about, you know, crypto and privacy and, and everything else, you know, I saw from sort of my seat, uh, you know, thinking about financial crime all the time, you know, in addition to all of the sort of, you um, benefits around privacy related to fundamental rights and freedom and everything else, which is so important. I, I really came to see the, the lack of privacy in, um, in crypto as a major cause of a lot of the crime that's happening today. So if you think about all the frauds and scams and theft that's rampant, you know, so much of that is because, you know, as a community, we're putting so much information out there on public blockchains but then the bad guys take advantage of it and and do that. And and not to mention, you know, that's just scammers, not to mention the sort of threat from various governments around the world who will take that information and try to do bad things with it. So I, I really see in addition to privacy enabling um, freedom and human rights and all of those great things, I actually think it can also be a mechanism to, to help prevent crime and corruption and other things. And so, um, you know, I think Tornado Cash is is given us a vehicle to sort of tell our story and yeah, you know, in, in an audience with the government and otherwise and, and attention on the issue that I think, you know, hopefully we can take there, which is, you know, sort of some, some maybe questionable actions by the government, but use it as an opportunity to educate and help them learn and, and take this forward. So i um, super excited to be here. Uh, if there's anything else, Elena, you want me to cover? Great. Oh, it looks like Craig just cut off, but... He was almost done, so I think it was actually pretty great timing. Um, but yeah, just to reiterate, um, so Craig joined join us as general counsel. In light of things like Tornado Cash News, um, you know, Craig is basically here to help us bolster the argument that privacy is innately a good thing for crypto. It is a necessary thing for crypto. Um, and, you know, those efforts are actually going to reduce crime uh, rather than add more to it. So... I uh, could not be more excited to have him join on board. Um, next up is Mira. Um, Mira joined us just uh, last week, I think, actually. So this is our second week at, here at, here at, at, at our Ironfish. Um, so Mira, if you could just introduce yourself for a tiny bit, that would be awesome. Yeah, for sure. Hi, um, everyone. I'm currently, as Elena mentioned, interning here at Ironfish. And for me personally, the reason that i I'm really excited about joining Ironfish is again in the privacy space, especially with the recent news when it comes to blockchain, it's just so important. And I worked at a couple of other bigger tech companies, never in the crypto space, but I've I've just seen profitability and I'm really excited to join the team as well. Awesome. Next up, I wanted to give some stats about how well the uh, testnet is doing. Um, so currently, we have roughly 6,100 nodes online. Um, these stats are publicly available. You can go check them out yourself. So this stat in particular is at stats.ironfish.network. Um, so you can monitor things like where are people hosting their nodes from, um, some information about those nodes, as well as how many there are and what versions they're running. So all this information is publicly available. 
Um, currently, we have roughly 150-ish, 1,000 transactions per day. Again, these stats are actually publicly available. Um, these stats in particular are on the Block Explorer. So if you go to explore.ironfish.network slash charts, um, you will see those charts and how many transactions we've had over time. I'll post both of these links into the, um, into the chat so you guys can check them out. Um, again, I'm, you know, kind of very proud of these numbers. Um, Ironfish is running more zero launch proof transactions than any other chain. Um, in comparison to chains like uh, Zcash, for instance, um, you know, they do, they did roughly like 900,000 shilling transactions um, since, inception, since Zcash launched. Um, we do that, you know, every few days. Um, so we're definitely stress testing the system quite a bit. Uh, and again, thank you uh, so much for anyone and everyone who is running a full node, sending those transactions, mining. Um, you are helping us make the product better. Um, and again, a lot of the issues that we have encountered uh, dealing with optimization and, and usability, um, honestly, we would not have found them had we had lower volume, such as eCash or Monero. Um, like we have, you know, I think Monero has roughly 10,000 transactions a day. We have magnitudes bigger. Um, again, this actually really does help us uh, find all of these issues and make Ironfish better. Uh, the other announcement I want to make is around um, Mainnet. Uh, so Mainnet is a conference that's happening in New York. Um, we'll, I will be presenting there uh, on September 23rd. It'll be on a panel uh, with uh, someone from Zcash and someone from the regulatory space talking primarily about privacy and crypto and the importance of privacy in crypto. Uh, we'll also announce when we'll go to Mainnet. Um, so <laughs> we're still trying to figure out the exact date. Uh, but we are uh, going to be launching it next year. Our original plan was to do it Q4 of this year. Um, if you look at our roadmap, uh, it's slightly outdated, but you can kind of tell that some of the efforts that we are working on currently, like multi-asset, and again, that uh, very acute focus on optimization, like the wall 2.0 work, um, has added on a bit more work than we originally planned. Um, again, we want to make sure that Ironfish is a good product at Manet launch. And so we decided to focus on launching next year, not this year. Um, and we'll be uh, revealing kind of a more updated, more granular roadmap for you guys uh, next time. So up next, uh, we're going to have several people talking about the projects that we're currently working on. Um, so just a quick recap. Uh, we'll have Derek talk about some of the gossip updates. So we did a you know pretty big update on the gossip uh, protocol itself. We'll have Jason talk about the wallet 2.0 work. Um, we'll have Rohan give an update on the multi-asset effort. Uh, and then we'll have Jason again talking about some of the stability efforts. So with that, I'm going to give it away over to Derek to talk about some of the gossip updates. Thanks, Nana. <laughs> Um, yeah, so last month we deployed our changes to our block propagation model. Um, if you remember from our prior uh, update last month, we had just rolled out, I think, our changes to our transaction propagation. Um, so we've been really happy with the bandwidth improvements we've seen from that. Um, but I think uh, we would still like to see more improvements in the actual time it takes to propagate blocks um, from node to node. And I think as a result of some of the bandwidth improvements we made, it, it may have caused certain cases to increase the time it takes to pop, propagate um, blocks. And then I think, uh, I suspect that some of the recent performance issues we've been having have been making that um, seem a little bit worse than it could be. Um, so we'll talk about that in a little bit, um, but we're still monitoring the changes. Um, we're at least happy with the model going forward. So our kind of next step is to iterate on it and refine uh, performance and stability issues. And as, again, we'll talk about shortly, I think um, our focus is going to go into making the node perform better and making sure that, in particular, the node is responding to requests for, for example, new blocks or missing transactions and the like, rather than um, dropping those requests or timing them out. And that should help bring down the latency as well. Um, so. Next, I'll pass on to Jason to talk about some upcoming changes to Wallet, which should also contribute to improvements in performance and stability in that area. 
Hello. Yeah, so a bunch of you have been in the Wallet2 beta channel helping us test it. But for those that don't know, Wallet2 is a refactor of our existing wallet, which we're calling Wallet 1.0, um, with a couple major improvements. One, it will be much faster to create transactions. Two, it'll be significantly faster to check your balance. And these improvements will actually lead to the whole node experience being better because those tools are actually used by a lot of different um, commands like deposit and deposit all. So just as a, a comment about how this is going, um, we were getting pretty ready to kind of release it, but what we found is uh, because we were loading all of your nodes and transactions kind of into memory, there were some people who reported, well, there's some memory issues reported as well as some node startup issues reported. So we're getting pretty close to launching this. Um, so I just want to say you can use it now, but it's probably better to wait till launch. If you want to help us test it, you can join the Wall of Two beta channel. But uh, we think that this will essentially make the whole experience better once we ship this very soon. We're hoping to get it out within the next like couple of weeks. Uh, and then from there, I think uh, Rohan is going to give an update on multi-asset. Yep. Uh, thanks, Jason. Um, yeah, so I've been working with Matt over the past uh, a little over a month on some of the multi-asset efforts. As you know, we're trying to uh, update Ironfish so you can uh, bridge assets from other chains and create arbitrary assets. So some of the notable uh, updates for this project are that we updated some of our circuits and proofs. So we've gotten a prototype working where you can now create arbitrary assets, uh, mint arbitrary assets, and then actually uh, spend some of these coins. Um, so we've been writing some uh, integration tests and we've been able to verify that we can actually create mint and uh, spend some new assets. So um, over the next couple of weeks, Matt and I are gonna be working closely together to uh, clean up some of this prototype work and then start focusing on uh, some of the burn transactions as well. Uh, cool. I will hand it back over to Jason, who will be talking about stability. Yeah, so I think a lot of people were basically experiencing stability problems in the network. Um, just a couple of those. Our overall memory usage was extremely high. Many users were crashing because their heap was growing too large. The node was using too much memory, um, and the heat, it, Ironfish was terminating itself. Um, other issues that we recognized are people would make deposits, and they weren't getting mined. Um, and then there's other issues like just, in general, slow sync speed. Um, and if you are a miner, you would also struggle to mine sometimes because the time it would take to construct a block would just would be too slow that you would lose out on the block. There's a lot of issues that we're actually tracking. Um, we've actually pivoted a decent amount of engineering resources to focus on these issues. So we do know about them. Uh, we care pretty deeply about the experience that Ironfish users face when they use it. We don't like that the experience is degraded when users encounter these issues. So we are kind of focusing efforts on that. Um, I mean, another common one is the block explorer would be out of date or the pool would go down. That is a common complaint that the pool goes down. So we recently found a critical bug in our RPC layer that was crashing both the pool and the block explorer sinker. Uh, not to promise that that is all the bugs, but we are attempting to kind of dedicate resources to those right now. So those fixes will essentially be a drip feed um, into each release. So don't expect one release that fixes all the problems. Uh, these efforts will generally be ongoing. Um, and I also want to thank some developers in the, on our team, like Derek and Matt and other people. <coughs> they have uh, put in a couple of nice CPU and performance fixes, which have brought our, both our memory and our CPU usage down. Uh, so thank you for that. And look to the update notes that we put out in our announcements channel for more information as we get those fixes out to the community. So thank you very much. And then I am going to actually let um, Adi actually talk about a topic that is very relevant 
Um, a lot of people have been asking about GPU mining. So I'm going to let him kind of comment on that. 